Microphone check one, two. What is this? The sound <laughs> is a bomb. No, 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 no. <laughs> My name is Rhyme Sayer. Rhyme, <laughs> rhyme Sayer? I don't have a rhyme to answer that, but that's okay. So, Rhyme Sayer is your name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just practicing my rapping. Sorry. You know, I can actually rap pretty good, but I just don't really like to. I don't think it's fair to the people. Here. I don't think I've ever heard you rap. Really. I can rap really good, but I don't like to rap because for many reasons. But one of them, it's not fair to the other people that aren't as good as rap means <laughs> they have to listen to me. <laughs> for the professionals. Are we started? <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Chris. This is my wife May. We're we're talking about like what would you do for a living if you lived in the Wild West? And for me, I would be a cowardly barber. You know, the guy that, like, whenever there's trouble, you duck behind the chair, um, you know, just to, in case there's bullets flying, you know. Not really a big player in the whole Wild West scene. I just be... But you'd know all the stories, though, because everyone talks to the barbers when they're, you but know, the, getting their I would be good at gossip, and that's the most important part of being a barber. Oh, yeah, what would you do? a big gossip. You are such a gossip. I love gossip. He loves it's it. It's one of my favorite things. I like <laughs> gossip, skateboarding, and surfing. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorites. <laughs> what would you do if you live in the Wild West? A madam. I'd be a madame. I yeah. think I, I, I How think, easy is that life, right? I think I didn't even have to ask that question. I for for sure you'd be a madam if you live in the Wild West. I'd be yeah. I'd be in this huge mansion. I'd have a bevy of beautiful ladies and men's. And uh, you know, I'd Putting I'd them just, to work. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is that I would no, I would just let them do whatever they wanted to do, and I'd be the one like you know, kind of like stay in line. As long as your customers are happy, uh, you know, they can I'd do be kind of like a um, a school principal, really. Yeah. And how would you dress? Hmm. I don't know. Depends how I feel. Maybe like. Should I? Re I'll rephrase that. How would you accessorize? Oh, I'd have a parasol <laughs> with a dagger inside it. You could pull out in case there's a sign of trouble. And if, <laughs> would you cover your say like whoever was making the trouble's eyes with your with your hand so they wouldn't be scared before you slice their throat? So as we were talking about weapons um, this morning, <laughs> and, and it led me to I don't know what this weapon of that I I've got a lot, but <laughs> this weapon that I have is called it's it's a, it's actually legal, and we we love asps you know those little things that they're like a little club and you go like that and it whips out into a big club but they're they're illegal in California here. So this is a this is a legal, safe, not safe alternative, but it's like a whip. And what you can do is, and God, I've whipped myself with it, and it's gnarly. It's like horrible. But try. if if that won't oh. do it for you, okay. yeah, no, let me see, let me see. If you even lightly, yeah, that, it hurts yeah, bad. That hurts. You can actually. We're gonna do a demonstration of what just what kind of damage you can do with these. But if that's not enough, you can do it with this and make it like a club, like a morning star. And there's a little. There's a little. Do, Handy glass breaker at the end, but and then <laughs> and then what else? It let us. Can I have? Can I have that one? Please? The whip. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but it's gnarly. Well, it's called a stinger. <laughs> stinger. That's what it's called. A stinger club. This is another club that it comes from Africa. It's called an Oisa club or knock, uh, not carry, not carry, but um, but this we got in Africa in in um we actually. We lived in Africa for for three months while South we South Africa, South Africa, which is the most <laughs> southern part of Africa. <laughs> but South Africa South is Africa is huge. <laughs> it's huge. South Africa. We travel all over Africa though. But, yeah. But um, but we lived there for three months while filming Action Point, and um, we're recalling some of our stories. And I'll tell you what, in South Africa, a lot of times trouble can happen. In in a you need like I always had weapons on me. In a <laughs> this was not a practical one. But. You did. You had a lot of weapons. Well, in case, because there was a lot of wild animals on set everywhere. Like in the hotel, there was wild animals yeah. in the hotel. Uh, yeah, on, on set. set. We, we had a lot of animals. A but lot. We actually did. And they didn't, like, in, especially, like, we had, like, big, you know, like, they had a, a bear and big cats with the bear they brought from America. But the really zebras. most dangerous one was the baboons. And I don't think anyone realized how oh, dangerous yeah. they were. But... 
what we were we were talking about was a lot of films are being made in South Africa right now, and what was shocking was the safety standards on set, like zero, like There's um, none. one day there it rained and and um, they built like. There was like these wires everywhere and like snakes of wait, wires wait. and cables. <laughs> but before the not just rain, it was the deadliest fun, thunder the worst and, lightning, I've ever and seen. lightning storm. Like it was a deadly lightning storm. It killed four people. Mm -hmm. Not in our, on our no, not but <laughs> in the area. Almost, almost. Yeah, four people got electrocuted on set that day, and yeah, they the, kept thinking the grounds like, guys. For, for insurance reasons, they had to like try to film. Or stay open for six hours to say get the insurance money for not being able to film so or something like that yeah so instead of looking at the weather report and just being realistic and saying it's not going to stop like every time it would stop raining or thundering for a little while they'd start to set up and then sure enough on the mountain like like 10 minutes later it'd start again and there was kids on the set there was yeah. like all these animals that day because it was a petting zoo day they were filming and Everyone, it was like thunder hitting the ground everywhere. Yeah. Sorry, lightning hitting the ground everywhere. Like women crying, kids freaking out, yeah. animals going Cause, bonkers. Because the cost of women like, were, were crying because the, 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 the thunder and lightning was a sign the, from the gods. The, the gods are angry. Yeah, they're so angry. It was the, I'm not to call anybody out, but it was the most irresponsible thing I've ever seen done in my life. Like, ah. Oh, and it was, it was the day me. that. The kids were on set. Yeah, like it was the one day that they had year kids old, on set. Four-year-olds were on set. Because was, there was supposed to be a petting zoo or something that day in in the film. But, God, it was it was hard. So the grounds, four of the groundskeepers got electrocuted. No, no, two of them. They were standing in a puddle because, <laughs> you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we were just standing in a big puddle. The sound water. man got electrocuted because they blew his, up his, monitor. Gear, his gear was like basically a lightning rod. The whole set was all these rides. So the whole set was a light, <laughs> was, was a lightning it's rod. A, yeah. it it was, was and we were just like in our little trailer, like just watching, like, like, cause the film was actually being shot on a mountain and we were at the bottom of it. And all the people on, on the mountain on standby were just like in the hands of God <laughs> and God was angry. You know, actually speaking of sets, like the trailers, we had trailers and we had this little area and it was great. Jackass doesn't have trailers for no. any of the cast members. It's it's a free for all. Like just so you know, if you ever end up on a Jackass set, it's there's no trailers. There's a little canopy sometimes. Yes. And I mean, on the first Jackass movie, like there was no catering. They brought us like <laughs> bologna sandwiches for lunch. That was our craft service. Not not even not even not Subway or anything like that. Bologna sandwiches with like mayonnaise, like on like Wonder Bread. That was. To say, I don't know to save money on the budget. The, the movie ended up making you know a fortune. Like, like. But we were talking about the workaholic set for um, people Game Over sharing Man, rooms. Right? Game, Game Over Man. Oh, yeah. Like, um, they flew Chris and I out to Vancouver, Vancouver, and like Chris had a really nice trailer. It was so it was cool. And you were in the movie for like thirty seconds. Straight from South Africa. Oh yeah, we were straight from South Africa, and before that, we were straight from Australia. And we'll get to that another time. But um, basically, like, the Game Over Man guys, like, oh, their production was amazing. They had rad trailers. And it was just a Netflix movie. Yeah, yeah. They had the premiere. Like, oh, God, it was like so everyone good. that was in the movie got, um, got, they had an after party at the W Hotel in Westwood. And we got, like, our own table and, like, a six-course meal. And we're all super hungry. It was insane. Yeah. Like, I'd never seen anything like that before. That's not how it goes on Jackass. No. <laughs> it's not how it goes anywhere. Which is fine. Like, remember, Tommy? Like, they had Wagyu burgers. They had, Wagyu like, burgers. seared tuna. Seared tuna. They had oh, truffles, truffles on macaroni and cheese. Oh, it was like, so And they'd, like, good. like, cut the truffles for, or, like, grind. And Shaggy on. was supposed to be there, but he wasn't there, and he had his table. Yeah, all, and like, all these people didn't know that they had tables that they could have had. Oh my these god, meals. it was so good. It was rad, and that was the best premiere I've ever been to. It was, it was the best premiere by far, and oh my god, another thing I remember in South Africa um, that I, that shocked us was like after it, that giant thunderstorm. So there was all these cables everywhere, and to the the main electric box. To make sure it didn't get wet, they built like a little platform on a bucket. No, no, it wasn't a platform. It was an island an made island, out of yeah. a like like an Amazon box, like a deliverable Amazon box. They put a Amazon box in the middle of a puddle, and then they put the um like a cross, like almost like a crossroads 
of electrical circuits. Yeah, all like, the snakes the and cables, plugs, like You know, like, it was sitting on top. It was the most hazardous set. And then you look over, there's a guy siphoning gas, holding the hose with one hand, God. smoking a cigarette with the other. Just shocking. Or when you were on set, I think one of the trees was set on fire. And oh, yeah, I was, like, filming. watching it. And I'm like, oh, there's, there goes a tree. Yeah, they <laughs> caught a tree on fire with this light that they put too close to the eucalyptus tree, which is... Flammable. Super flammable. Oil. It was full of oil. <laughs> there were so many near accidents on that. It was amazing. But that's South Africa. And that's also what and makes... And that's also Action Point. And action that was Action Point. point. Was full but that's of... what makes South Africa exciting. Like, it was... <laughs> South Africa was a beautiful place. I, I mean, I really loved it over there. Like, it was so pretty. And, and the animals and the people, the people were just beautiful. Um... And also the best food. And also Justin food. Bieber was there at the Justin same time. Justin Bieber was there too. As us, right? Yeah. He's been at some places. <laughs> we where crossed paths with him actually more often. But we've than, never met him. We crossed paths <laughs> with him. We were touring in Australia and we were on like making like the same stops as Justin Bieber. So everywhere we go, we'd see like <laughs> we're just following someone from him. Justin Bieber's crew. Like we're just following we got him. we got to know them. <laughs> like <laughs> the opening act. Wait, there was another accident in in um, South Africa, but it wasn't our set. It was the uh, set for what was that movie that was being filmed? Oh, um, Maze Runner. Maze Runner was being filmed, so they had like the lead actor do a stunt, and he broke his arm, and I believe it got delayed for yeah. a while. And that was the reason why we had to stay at a hotel further away from the waterfront yeah. because Maze Runner people took their like condos yeah. so we were living in this like hotel for a while and i mean it was great like there was really was nice awesome. cafes but, but it was really unsafe yeah like they didn't want anyone from production or the cast members to walk around alone and two of the cast members were robbed at knife point in bocamp which is like just this. up the road. It was just up the road. Boat camp is really beautiful. And, the day. and I don't think like it should stop people from visiting because it got was so beautiful. The but these were two kids. You that, shouldn't know. You should not wander there like uh, but alone I mean, you without a guide. Yes, with a guide. But yeah. it's a place that you do want to visit. Because all the criminals know that tourists go there. So yeah. it's just a racket. You know, they go, they wait for well, someone they, to walk up alone and they rob them. But Bridget and Alexandra Bridget, were very, very... They, they, I they would were, rob them. They were told not to. Like, yeah, I, I would, would rob them, them too. Like, I even <laughs> gave them. I gave them both pepper spray, in after, case. But, but after. no, 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 no. I gave it to them before. Really? Yeah, and I was like, carry this with you guys. This, it, a lot of sketchy stuff can happen here. So carry this. You know, I, trust me, it works. I've had it done to me. Yeah. And, but no, like of course they didn't. I was like, they got robbed. They came back and they got robbed. And I'm like, did you have your pepper spray? They're like, no. Like. Well, Uncle Chris was bringing everybody weapons. So he brought all the kids like that were on set like weapons. Like he gave them an asp. Yeah. You gave one oh, you gave Pemberton an asp. Yeah. Um, you gave some of the guys and girls uh pepper spray. To the point where um I believe Taryn still had pepper spray and yeah. she was going through um Heathrow Airport and had pepper spray in her bag and she got pulled aside by authorities because I mean, pepper spray. And she's like, oh, I forgot. And I love Taryn. But she was like, so. <laughs> yeah. She's. Oh, yeah. my God. She Taryn. doesn't ha always have the most common sense. But. <laughs> but we, were, we went I'm to Malawi. We robbed. went to Malawi with her. God, when, didn't did someone try to rob you when you were walking with oh, her? Oh, yeah. The one I, time. The two, right, yeah. We were always together. May and I are always together. But the one time that I went off to do something separated when we were walking around. She's walking with Taryn, and sure enough, someone runs up to try to rob Taryn. Huh? Yeah, and I was behind her. I was, like, a few steps behind her. But we don't look like we would be friends. Like, we just look the opposite <laughs> of each other. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we were, we were kind of not walking in sync. We weren't yeah. walking side by side. I was walking, like, four steps behind her. Yeah. When I mean, some guy came up and tried to grab her bag, her backpack, yeah. and then I frightened him off. <laughs> you know, me she, and my big yeah. muscles. <laughs> yeah. God, God, yeah, we went to Malawi with her. We took her to Malawi, which is another country in Africa, which is awesome. But these fishermen, like, were hauling in their net. Oh, God. Their big catch, and they, they wanted to show, like, the, um, her, like, this the, the biggest fish of their catch. It, yeah. The fish was this big, and it was like a spiky bass. Like, it was a freshwater bass. And he looked at me, and he's like, you want to hold it? And I'm like fuck no like i don't want to hold a spiky fish she's like yeah 
and I take a few photos and then it spikes her and she releases the fish outside of the net. And like the fisherman comes back to go and like, hey, was my fish? And she's like, oh, oh. Oh, it swam away. <laughs> they're, they're, they're greatest fish. All the rest of the fish were like that little. And I was like, like uh, they, they have to be that's stew. what you get for giving this chick your fish. They shouldn't have let the white girl hold the fish. No. Let's just t- say it how it is. <laughs> but, but Malawi was awesome. <laughs> Malawi like, was awesome. When you're in Africa, like driving around, like you have to act like it's the Wild West and that you're in charge. Like, because like there's like in like. You know, countries like outside of South Africa, like oh, there was there's military roadblocks stops. and everyone's got, you know, like, yeah, like machine guns and they stop you and like, I want to know what you're up to. And you just have to act like you're yeah. in charge. So we stayed at this like Airbnb. It was beautiful. And and like the owner was this old Italian guy who um, basically he moved from what, Sicily, right? He, he, oh, this is, he, yeah, he grew up in Africa, though, basically. Uh, yeah, but his family he, was he, one of those colonial families. That, like, so he like, you know, basically developed this town, built a school, built like a few buildings and structures and basically was like the, the dude in that area. He was area. behind like 80 percent of the. So, and so um, we were staying on his property and he's like, like driver guy, kind of like the, the, like his help. He drove Taryn and I to town because Taryn and I wanted to buy fabric and we also wanted to buy some hats. And um, on the way back, we got stopped by a military checkpoint. And it was like this dude, basically it was really sketchy. It wasn't official. And the guy was asking us questions. I think I have footage of this, Mm -hmm. but he's like, where are you guys from? And we're like, we're from California. And um, he was like, oh, Washington. And I was like, yeah, close enough. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. Didn't he he like say like some other town that was outside of the United States even? Yeah, I think Toronto. He he said Washington. (laughs) He definitely said Washington. And um, so, you know, on the way to the airport, it was just the four of us. It was Scott, yourself, myself, and and Taryn, right? Mm -hmm. It was the four of us. And we were driving to Lilongwe Airport, and there was another military checkpoint. And I told Scott, drive straight through. Do not stop at this. This dude, they were going to rob us. They yeah. were basically going to rob us. And I, like, spit some, like, mad you Malawan. You spoke the language. <laughs> Somehow. And then we just went. You just got to go. You got to act like you're the boss, really. Yeah, and I did. I dropped yeah. I dropped the guy's name and I said, no, we are guests, blah, blah, blah. But he had, like, full-on yeah. AKs. They, they, was, they were, you. like. Yeah, they tried to intimidate you. But you just have to act like you're in charge. And then you go. Yeah. Don't stop. No. Have you seen Blood Diamond? Don't stop. Don't stop. And then, yeah, and the guy's like, they're just children. And then he gets shot. Like, don't yeah. stop. Don't stop. Don't stop at the roadblock. That's a really important thing to know when you're in But Africa. it was really sketchy, though, because, like, seriously, they were they were ready to rob us. We had our luggage. They were looking in the back of our car. I mean, yeah. you know, we could have died. <laughs> we could have died. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went and ate this um, restaurant at the uh, at the airport because we hadn't eaten in like four days because we there's no fast food. There's no um, you can't really go to supermarkets per se in in Malawi. It's not really like a place where you're kind of you know. There's a liquor store. And the liquor store is What's at the, the gas station. No, remember, it was at the gas station. Oh, yeah. And um, they had, uh, how do you call it, women for hire oh, at oh, the oh, gas oh. station the liquor gas station, store? yeah, there's women with eyeshadow. And, and lipstick. That Taryn thought was really, Taryn thought Taryn, were very pretty. Oh my God. She's like, you're so pretty. And like, May's like, they're prostitutes. Like, that's why, yeah. like, they have the eyeshadow on. And they just hang, and they hang out in front of the building. But <laughs> going to a prostitute in, in Malawi is a bad idea. Oh. Like, I don't even have to say why. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, you, speak, oh, my God. That reminds me of Wild Boys trips. Okay, I can't talk you about, can't talk about that. About some, this, yeah, some members of the Wild Boys production that made some bad decisions on the road in Africa. But, you know, uh, traveling, traveling with you guys, I've traveled to Canada with the, with the group. And Mm -hmm. I was uh, basically, I was just like hanging out and and selling merchandise for you guys while you guys were on stage. But um, we've had some run-ins with TSA uh, traveling with you guys. I remember when we were in Australia and um, Wee Man got kind of pulled aside for nail clippers. That's how strict. 
they were in Australia at domestic airports because we were doing domestic routes. We like man, we, we man seems to get like in confrontations with not confrontations, but held up at the, at the security thing often because I lot. don't think he goes in there like stoked to see the security people, and and I think they they vibe off it because they seem he's had some problems with security, and it's just God, I don't want to speak for we man, but. Yeah, I don't... Okay, he made a joke in front of federal police, and I can remember this because we were we were on... And they knew who you guys were, but he made a joke, and remember you're not allowed to joke about bombs or anything like that? Yeah. So he made a joke in front of the police to a policeman, like, as we were, like, boarding, like, getting to our gate. Do you remember that? No, no, I actually didn't, but I heard about it. Yeah, I was like, God, you can't make any jokes. In no, the, in this and I video. think Dave, Dave and I looked at each other and we we're like, No, shut up! And then the cop said, I know who you are, I know what you do. Don't make any more of those jokes. And he's like, Oh, and he kind of like was like played dumb. And um, I was like, Damn it, we man, like you got away, you got away like that. I have, I have to explain something that May um thought I should explain it to everyone. In Jackass, there's sometimes we do these, uh, there, there's these bits with bees. And if you're ever wondering why I'm never in them, they they uh, they had us all get tested for out for if we're to see if we're allergic to bees. And apparently, I came out like extremely allergic to bees. So uh, if you're wondering why I'm never in these bits, like it's not because I'm a coward or he just can't. Actually, I'm not afraid of bees at all. And He's I, not. Yeah, like, but I'm kind of bummed I couldn't be in any of those bits. They won't allow it. But I don't think I was always allergic to bees. I think it happened after I did the Glove of Ants in Brazil, which if you haven't heard about that, it's this ant called a bullet ant, and they weigh, like they weave like hundreds of them into this glove, and it's a rite of passage for, for kids when they turn 13 or I'd something. I'd hate to be that weaver. Oh, like me too. You have to wear this glove for like the, the length of this song. The shaman sings a song. It's like eight minutes long. And it puts like the it's the worst poison of any um, insect or the worst sting, most painful, and it's the worst thing I've ever done in my life by far. So um, I think after that I became extra allergic to everything. I got stung by my first bee at thirty five years old. Like That's I went, I went thirty five years, and I was drinking coffee outside on the balcony, and I put my hand around the coffee cup, and I felt this like sting. Mm-hmm. And it really hurt. It was on my on my finger, and it was it was a bee. It was a fucking. I went thirty five years. That's ridiculous that you didn't get stung in, in thirty five no. years. It makes you want to question yourself, though. Like, how, why? Like, what were you doing to keep yourself that safe from bees for thirty five years? I'm how? calm. <laughs> I'm yeah, mellow. Bees, bees respond to people like panicking. I'm calm. Yeah, that's why Dave England gets stung a lot more than Steve-O, like when filming. I'm like chill. Yeah. Walking down the street where there's bees. And you don't have friends that like stick them on you. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> we made this thing in Wild Boys called a bee cube, and we it was like a see through cube, and we put ourselves in it, and then like a big bucket of bees, and like 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 amped it up, and you know uh, everybody got stung a lot, but um, yeah, we weren't so calm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've. <laughs> I was listening to like us like the past few times we filmed and I noticed I say like a lot. So everybody Because you're from <laughs> California. It, it's all about yeah, it's where I'm from. It's my local dialect. Yeah. So um I'm gonna try not to say like No, you as much, don't it might be a tall order. No. You're gonna say it more. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's like it's like telling a Canadian like A, like Don't say A. Or or if oi. you yeah, if you were, were an Aussie says oi, you would probably called a racist if you called told a Canadian not a racist but some sort of prejudice if you told a Canadian not to say a. I can never be racist. I'm Asian. <laughs> There's no racist Asian people. I'm Asian. <laughs> Me too, because I'm with an Asian. Pretty much. Pacific Islander. Yeah. I'm with an Asian slash Pacific Islander. I can't be racist. <laughs> I can't be racist. You're not. <laughs> You're the least racist no, I'm not. person. I think it's it's just ridiculous. Uh, we avoid politics on this show, yeah. but I'll tell you what: if you are racist, you're fighting a really uphill battle. <sighs> like because, you know, we're gonna take over. And, uh, yeah. 
That's actually, actually sorry, Tom. <laughs> you're, you're you're going down. <laughs> yeah, well, Tom, the, the truth of it is, we're gonna just eat your genes. You're gonna eat your genealogy. We're gonna take your DNA and we're gonna eat it. Yum yum yum. Because <laughs> I really don't put it that way, mate. I, I I think it's more <laughs> that my answer to that is not that you're gonna take over. It's more that everyone's gonna blend. They're mixing. People are mixing like wild. Yeah, and so eventually everyone's gonna we're gonna take over. Like people's skin is turning. Oh, brown. over seventy percent of the brown. of the world is <laughs> Chinese, yeah, like that's alone. True. That's so true. if you want to say take over, you might have already taken over. But who doesn't like as a continent? Who doesn't like Asian food? Why would like, there be more Asians what? than everybody else? Asia is the biggest continent. In the world. But who doesn't like their food? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Right? Yeah, I I love it. Yep. Who but, doesn't like sushi? No. <laughs> Who doesn't like Chinese food? Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Some people say if you take an Asian woman as a lover, you'll never go back. Oh. <laughs> it's called yellow fever. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. And there's no cure. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Chris. why are Asian women so much better in in of lovers than, than other women? I mean... Because we we nurture you, like we feed you, we do your dishes, we wash your clothes, we take care of you. <laughs> that, that 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 rub was slightly clawed. It was a nice rub of the fingers, but you could tell the claws could easily. That's the excitement of being with an Asian woman. Claws. She might talk, touch you softly, but like you know, in a moment, the claws no. could come out. You know what, like Asian women do is that they pinch you. Like I remember just being pin like a lot back here. Like they just pinch you. It's like they ch put you in check, and you get pinched in the back right here. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> like if you want to put someone in check, and you're like, hey, like shut up. You just give them a bit of a pinch back here, and it's not noticeable. You, you don't really notice it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris is like black. So that blue. type of fever, yeah, there is no cure to yeah. it. <laughs> and Asian women are far better lovers than any other woman. Well. <laughs> far better. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> You'd have to just see for yourself, really. <laughs> you have to just give it a go. Well, I'm talking to our audience, so <laughs> I'm trying to encourage them. Just give it a go. They have oh, given it a go. break the racism by <laughs> yeah. being with an Asian woman. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm saying these things. I'm talking to our directly to our audience. If you haven't tried, go for it. But don't be surprised if, if you if you find out that what we're saying is all true and there is no cure. <laughs> and it might the be the same, thing, but I think I think in general, like Nick's you know, children are beautiful too. They are, but you know, when you take a lover, you take a lover, <laughs> yeah. you just you just gotta treat him with respect. That's it. That's what people want. Respect. They want R E S P E C T. Also what what <laughs> If you're wondering, also, guys, if, maybe if you don't have as much luck in the love department, I'll, I'll tell you something. Okay. Don't make it all about you. You need to ask to make yeah. the woman, whether it's subconscious or not, people want to feel good about themselves and feel good being around you. So just ask that, be interested in the person that you have your eye on, that you want want to love, want, that you want to make love to, or maybe even marry. But but you need to ask them lots of questions about themselves like yeah. and be interested in them, not talk about yourself. And that will make them feel good when they're around you, no, despite what you look like. If they feel good around you without knowing it, they'll want to be around you. So that, that's number one thing. Number two thing is is, <laughs> is nowadays, I've said it before. Uh, leave the toilet seat down. I always put this toilet he, seat down. He's after very cleaning. good. Yeah. Chris is, I mean, but that is maybe, not That is no, not my number say, two thing. Say, okay. but, <laughs> but that that would be on our list. But you've actually, I think I, I can count maybe like twice you've left the toilet seat up. And I think you were just super tired, but always you leave it down. I was taught that by my mom at a young age. Always put the toilet seat down after peeing. Chris's but mom is the best mom. Like, I kind of love her more than my mom. I saw but my mom. I love my mom a lot. I, I, I'll tell you a story about my mom. I love you. When mom. I was a little boy, there was an older kid at school. And you guys forgive me if I've told this before. We can edit this, this part out. Cut. No, not, don't really cut, though. But I might have said this before, but I was at school one time, and there was a kid that, like, was strangling me, and my mom saw it. She happened to be at school. She punched him in the stomach, made him cry. That's the type of mom she is. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. No, I she's rad. do that. She, she's done that to a couple of kids that, that have, like, wronged 
other children. Other family members. Yeah. yeah. She'll throw them like. She'll yeah. just she'll she'll do she'll do she'll she'll basically do some old fashioned. Yeah, she's really old fashioned just, in that just, way. Yeah. Yeah. She actually sent me one time to like beat somebody up that was doing something bad to our family and another close family member that that was being threatening to a family member. Did you beat them up? No, they were gone. They, <laughs> they, we never saw them again. They actually disappeared off the face of the earth. Oh, really? Yeah. Like um, your yeah. family. Yeah. Your family member. Mm -hmm. hmm. The, uh, a man was with another close family member that that uh, all of a sudden started being weird. I think he was on drugs, hmm. and he in a started being a little worried about him. And uh, and I then he I think he starts stealing money. He was a hor he started being a horrible person. But no, he disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, I think he. But uh, yeah, my, my parents really actually they told me to go get him. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I went. <laughs> <laughs> you go get him. Luckily, Chris. he was go go get him, Chris. Chris go will get, get him. him. Yeah, go get him. Chris. <laughs> yeah. But your your um it's your family so your family's quite interesting. So you um your grandfather. Was a bare knuckle fighter. Great grandfather. Great grandfather, yeah. and and don't I think we have his knuckles. Yeah, we have his his brass knuckles. Yeah. like a few pairs of them. Yeah, we we've got them. I think they. I don't even somewhere. think they're brass. I think they're made of steel. Like yeah, like um yeah like and yeah he was a bare knuckle uh, champion. He was a big man. He was eventually murdered though. By this uh, is crazy. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was a sheriff in Spokane, Washington, and. Back in back in that those days, Spokane was a really wild west. Speaking yeah. of wild west, oh. and um, you, like someone didn't like him. You know, he was a rough dude though, and I think he had made a lot of enemies. And someone like snuck like into his house at night, cut off the electricity. I think. Oh no, the phone lines. I don't even know if they had electricity, but they cut the phone lines and shot him, killed him. I kind of like the uh, the wild west mentality though, because I think it made for tougher people. They still have a. The, my family still has that wild west yeah, mentality. Yeah, you know, like. Like, do you know what I mean? It like, did, yeah. You, now you people are so took, soft. You kind of took everything in your own hands. Like, if someone did you wrong, personal responsibility. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you're gonna act, um, you know, incorrect, then then you know, better better be ready to to face. So, May, what right? you like about the Wild West is that people were supposed to take per, took personal responsibility and the brothels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I mean, like. And I'm not even in that way. Not in, even no, in like. No, life the, was more the, of an adventure. Yeah, in those days. it was kind of like okay. I mean, it was pretty bad. Like you know, hy rough. hygiene not wise. Everyone would like, survive. No, hygiene wise, yeah. it was like it was shitty. But you yeah. know, I mean, I think it was the mentality. I think it's like the cowboy mentality. I, I really appreciate I because I, I don't think as a society we would be the way we are if we didn't have such a rough you know, yeah. human oh, upbringing no. and, and lifestyle, right? Yeah. No, for sure. Like, we wouldn't be, like, our generation, we we got, like, spanked mm -hmm. and we got, you know, the belts and there was corporal punishment. Um, I, I don't think, uh, you know, like, in school, I think they want to reinstate getting, like, you know, <laughs> spanking the kids. Did they spank kids at your school? Well, they stopped. They stopped it. They, they stopped it a generation before. But the Christian brothers, they were like they spanked. Oh, the you Christian with brothers love spanking yeah. people, and and worse. But I went to a school where they spunk, spanked people spunk at one people. point. I never got spanked. I by like them, getting spanked. I remember one day my brother came home and he's like, "I got spanked in school," and and um so um and it was like apparently a bunch of the kids in his class were doing something wrong, and and the teacher, Mr. Kogan, you know, who I'll say by name because he's long dead, but um. You know, he he was described to me as looking like Gargamel from the Smurfs, and you know that the, so they lined the kids up as I imagined it, and they all spanked them. I'll tell you one time, uh, and so it was so funny because my brother didn't and his classmates they didn't really care about being it didn't really bother them getting spanked. They thought it was funny, but one time I I, I saw a kid in my class get spanked by my teacher, and I don't know what he was doing, maybe playing with scissors or something. And she's like, Colin, whatever his name was, Colin, you know, freely. Come up, come up here, and she comes up. She grabs him by the arm, and she's like, "You are not permitted to do that," and just spanks him like three times really hard. And yet, they like a few tears came out of his eye. But it was so. I'd rather that than so like pervy to I, me. I would rather get like spanked by a teacher than than have to stay after school. Like, <laughs> yeah, you me know too. I mean? Oh yeah. Like I also suck. I also want to talk about. Um, see, Mr. Kogan wasn't the only other the only, only principal at that school. His co-principal was his wife, Mrs. Kogan. One time, I went to to go pee. And uh, so I went to go pee. There's no one in the halls. 
And um, this one kid was going to pee beside me. And as we're walking in there, Mrs. Kogan comes barging into the bathroom. She was an old lady. You could tell she was maybe pretty in her day, but she was this old lady. She grabs him by the arm. And as we're walking back, she spanks him, not once or twice, but like 20 times as hard as she could. I don't know what, what he did wrong, but it was weird. It made me feel uncomfortable. You must have, you must, you must have done something super I crazy. Mean, in reality, having an old lady spank you, no matter how young you are, it wouldn't be that. Remember when you told me the story about your mom spanking you and you guys were just like laughing and giggling? Oh, yeah. Oh, she if she's throwing us around like whatever like mom would do to like like express her anger. Yeah. You know, we were just laugh in her face. Like it just was like mom wasn't very scary. Dad, on the other hand, would just oh, like yeah. talk in his deep voice, and he'd spank you that softly, and it would like bum us out. Like yeah, like he'd spank you that hard, and just it was just scary. But yeah, moms just aren't as scary as dads. So I had a really famous person go to my school, and um, they like they kind <laughs> of they were they worshipped him, and like <laughs> in the him. in the library in the library there was a cardboard cutout of him. And it was like, a, um, and then there was a couple of posters, movie posters. And uh, do you know who he was, Chris? Mel Gibson. Oh, oh. <laughs> so there was a Mad Max cutout <laughs> in the school library and the Braveheart, like, poster. And he was so famous. Oh, like, yeah. hero. Like, he was a hero. But now, I mean, actually, he's he's got a comeback. He's, like, he's had a little comeback, hasn't he? I don't know. All I know about Mel, I, I was on actually the Tonight Show the same night that Mel Gibson was, uh -huh, uh -huh. and um, he seemed like a nice enough guy, <laughs> but but um, he laughed at what me and Steve-O did with the alligators. I mean, but, well, he's Australian, so like he's got a sense of humor, yeah, but yeah, you know. So I I mean I thought he was he was nice, but I mean, but um, one thing I do know is though I, I have a friend that is friends with Mel Gibson, and um, when Mel Gibson got in trouble for for like drunk driving or you know. All that stuff, and he apologized well, and said, said he'd gone to rehab. Yeah. Well, like my friend said, like he's like Mel was maybe not telling the whole truth. He said he was he was getting drunk like the day before with Mel, I, like after you know, Mel like said he'd sworn off the booze. There's no Mel was excuse. Lying. No excuse now. No <laughs> excuse just a to drink and drive. There's <laughs> no excuse to drink and drive. Like there's none. Like I don't. I'm so it. afraid to talk about Mel Gibson because it, it, it fear of it going political. Because Mel Gibson has some extreme views. Yeah. So anyway, that's enough <laughs> of Mel Gibson. Psh, let's end it there. But yeah, I don't know if they still have that cardboard cutout at my school anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's another famous person that went I to I thought it. you were going to say Hugh Jackman. Wolverine. Oh, I would have loved Hugh Jackman. Me too. Like, I like him. I'm like... I, I've, he's a great guy. Yeah. You know, like when you like, think about like the man that... Like when men are like, that's a man's man. That's a man that I like to be like. Oh, yeah. I think Hugh Jackman is a man that I like to be like. He can sing, sing he can dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> and he can be Wolverine. He can do it right? all. Right? So that goes to show you if you're afraid, you know, to sing and dance, it won't make you look like a tough guy. Just think about Hugh Jackman. <laughs> you can still be Wolverine. You can still be a tough guy <laughs> and sing and dance. Hugh Jackman is living proof. Yep. And that's the type of man I want to be. You're well, almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. You're almost there. I'm just not that good of a dancer. Basically, I, I, you want to be Wolverine in the next movie if they ever cast it because you want to just show off your muscles. I, I posted something once online, like, claiming that I was, like, a dancer and or, like, maybe a good dancer. And <laughs> someone answered me, like, wrote to me and was like, Chris, you are not a good dancer. You are a funny dancer. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. But I I, I I, think I'm a good dancer. My mom thinks I'm a good dancer. She, oh, nobody can dance better than Chris. That's what she says. I've heard her say. <laughs> Again, I love like, Chris's mom. And I, I corrected her. I was like, no, mom, Patrick Swayze can dance better than me. Yeah, he's but another next one. Next to Patrick Swayze and Hugh Jackman, I'm the third best dancer. Yeah, he's I'm another man. one. You'd, you'd wanted to inspire to be. Pat oh, and Kurt Russell. And Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. He's, I mean, yeah. yeah. I he's, mean, he's, come on. My personality Jeez. is pretty much right? based on on Kurt Russell I and Patrick Swayze characters. I want to be Kurt Russell. My entire personality is based on Kurt Russell's character in Big Trouble in Little China. Jack Burton. Jack Burton. Jack Burton. There you go. And um, Patrick Swayze in most of his movies. Do you in, know who I really loved? My sensitive side up? and my tough side. Gina Davis. Oh, yeah. She, I loved her, Long too. Kiss Goodnight. Oh, come on. 
I, I like amnesia. She's cutting with a knife and she's that, you know, uh, that was a scene. Oh, I loved it. She's, a, I think if I was a woman, she'd be a woman that I'd want to be like right? too. But more about Patrick Swayze. Actually, at one point I got fired from Big Brother <laughs> and I, I would have been out on the streets of San Francisco if not, I didn't have no education, but I got hired at a temp agency um, and I was kept on as a permanent, I think because they thought I looked like Patrick Swayze, which oh. I had never really seen the resemblance, but... I think deep inside, yes, I do look a lot like Patrick Swayze. Oh, hey, uh, you know what I wanted to bring up is the uh, G-string rule on television. Jason Momoa, who has a very nice derriere, yeah. just like you, showed off his derriere. Right after, yeah, right after we talked about the rule of no spreadable cheeks. Yeah. We will go and turn on the TV. Jason Momoa goes on in a loincloth, turns around, and it's a G-string. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, totally fine to be on TV. See? So, Jay, yeah, Jason knew the rule, too. I don't think people should be ashamed of the G-string, especially if you're a man. I don't think people, no, right? no, they should never wear full-backed um, swimwear. Or, <laughs> or, like, if you want to wear underwear, full-back, you know, I wear boxer briefs myself. But when, if, in a bathing suit, it should be a G-string. <laughs> like, you can move really nicely. Hey, how did it, it feel in the water movement? when you were with the sharks in, like, your G-string? G-string? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't feel safe without it. Freedom of movement... <laughs> Like, everything, like, you're just going to get a wedgie anyway. I mean, look at, like, I mean, we were in Hawaii. Like, when you see girls surfing, they all, right, no matter on their build, they all wear wear G-strings, right? Uh, the, Why can't a man do that? The Ironman competition in Australia where they all get, like, wedgies. They, they all get wearing, wedgies like, automatically. Yep. So why not just like have a G-string rowing? in the first place? It's, like, a huge thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In, yeah, so, yeah, they all do. So why not just make it a G, like, cut out the material in the we first place? We should go to Australia, like, all of us. Let's go. I mean, what do you think Let's of that, May? Like, when, you know, when people are surfing, why is it... Women are so lucky that they get to wear these G-strings, and it's it's not only accepted, but people cheer for them for it. I think because, you know, some people feel uncomfortable about it. About men wearing them. Mm-hmm. I think some people are feel like feel uncomfortable. I think they're it. afraid of their own their own problems. But but what I've been trying to fight my entire life really is that men should be able to wear the same swimwear as women. It's not they shouldn't be forced to hide their bodies, especially. That, that's the why buns. I think the party boy character it it allows people to embrace male masculinity and g strings. Thank you, and I think I think you're right though. Like I I don't want to I never toot my own horn, but I think. Back when I first filmed Party Boy, yeah. I don't even like in Soho District of London where Party Boy was born, um, it was you couldn't easily find a male G string. Now male G strings are Everywhere. you can buy them at any five and dime store. Yeah. Practically. You buy them at Walmart. Yeah. And and you know, like men are wearing them. And it's you know, the world's a lot freer place now. Yeah. Thank God. The world is the world's changed. It's no longer Wild West. Yeah. It's not the wild, wild west anymore. But now, like now, like men can can like do these silly things that they, they always wanted to do anyway, and and not get called names, so, and, or, or or be able to like like have their sexuality threatened or or like assumed one thing or another, you know. So I don't know. I mean, we have been doing a lot of research on Scandinavia because we were thinking about going over there, and you know, like I think over. Th- like in Europe, it's a lot freer. Oh yeah, I'll tell the you. Mentality what. is a lot different. Here's the German mentality. Like I've been to the beach where a lot of Germans. You've traveled a lot. Yeah, I, I I once stayed in a in a little treehouse hut in Mexico for months, and um, um years ago, and there was a lot of Germans at this particular place, and they'd all when they go to the beach, they just tri- I don't care if they how they were built, they'd all wear like like tiny yeah. like g strings, if not nothing at all. In, in like these, you see these Germans, like German man on the bus, like in Mexico, like with all these villagers around him, he's just staying there with like a little banana hammock on. And the guy must have weighed 300 pounds. Like, and, but Germans, they're like so practical and realistic. Like, they're like, why would I wear clothes at the beach? It's at the beach, I'm going to be swimming. Why would I wear clothes? And it makes perfect sense, yeah. right? Like, and like, you know, other people are like, oh, you have to like wear like shorts, like but it's just not practical for Germans. Like that's ridiculous. You're going to be getting wet. You should take your clothes off. I can't. You want to get tan? I can't you wait wear to this... go to Germany. Yeah, they're so rad. There's no like worries and like fears about being nude. Like 
Like, it's like, why wouldn't I want to wear this? I'm trying to get tan here. Why would I wear shorts? It's going to, like, just give me a big tan line. Yeah. I, I should wear the skimpiest bathing suit I can find. Right. Yeah. And that's the way Germans are. I I, uh, I had a friend who was married to a German woman, and they went on a cross-country U.S. trip. Mm -hmm. And it was her first time traveling across the States, and they got to this beach in Alabama. And they go to the beach, and she just starts taking her clothes off. And he's like, no, you can't do that here. Like, they're, they're going to arrest you. She's like, that is ridiculous. Um to wear a swimsuit. She gets naked. Sure enough, she gets, she went to jail. Yeah. In Australia, there's a lot of nudie beaches. Oh, yeah. And I think, and in Europe, like, after a certain hour, they show pornographic... Oh, all of Europe. Yeah. Even, even, I, even it's, England. It's, I think that's really Wieners crazy. And everything. Like, they show more than we can show on in our rated, our rated movies. In, in America, TV. I don't think that, that a lot of Americans who haven't traveled um, or, or gone to Europe, they do that. They oh, yeah. really, they have porn after a certain hour on television. Well, nudity and porn are two different things, for one thing. But, but I mean, but it's Yes, the, it's you know, like, on some television, yes, they do have porn. But then even at normal hours, they have, like, there's a game show where people, like, get naked, and they're just all, like, yeah. regular, like, middle-aged people, like, all dongs everywhere. Dongs. Like, floppy, floppy, 50-year-old English dongs. Dong dongs. Uncircumcised. Yeah, all over the joint. And, and, um... <laughs> And and not trimmed or anything. No. Um, and um, why would you? <laughs> why would you? Because when you go out into the wild, it gets you need really that cold. hair. Yeah, you need that hair, especially in England. <laughs> 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 uh, but I, I think like what Chris is trying to say is that you shouldn't be afraid of your body. Yeah, you shouldn't. And and people shouldn't make you feel afraid. No. Because when they point at you and try to like like you know make fun of something, they're really pointing at themselves words but but like i i uh i i said this before yeah nudity is it, like completely strips away your inhibitions and if, if there's one thing i will preach it's if if you're ever like <laughs> like in a situation where your inhibitions are getting the best of you you don't need to take a drink you don't need to stick a needle in your arm just take your clothes off it's gonna be okay <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. That was It'll lovely. Give you a thrill. Stick a really needle nice. in your arm. I think, I think, Not that you're going to stick a needle in your arm. I, I, I think a lot of people would stop fighting and be aggressive to each other if they just took off a shirt or two. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Like a road rage. I, you know, you cut me off. I just strip, strip off. But it's like, do you want a hug? Like, just hug. Plus, it out. naked men are really funny. Oh no, they are. Yeah. Not just to look at, but like. It, there's a reason why once you get naked, you automatically become funnier. And you start laughing. Uh, you know, okay, so... With your balls Chris, and your wiener <laughs> dangling around. Just look down. All you have to do is look down if you want a quick laugh. There's like, a, men, a few Men genitalia is funny. I found of yours because, like, we were going through old photos of ours and the uh, photos of, like, you and your friend, like, naked doing handstands. And, and you know, you guys were, like, 20-something years old and it was just how it was. You like, know what? In that photo, which... I, 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 I di didn't mention it at the time. We were doing that break, isn't that breakdancing move where you jump from your hands? Yeah. Is that called the jackass? I don't know. You jump like from your hands? That's what we would do naked. We're gonna have to look that up. Yeah, you go like boing, boing, boing. That's what we were doing. And you were naked. Balls, balls. Midways. Just yeah, it's, the picture is pretty much of the area between our balls and our, and our kudos. Yeah, I, I've seen like all of the <laughs> other, like, well, most of the cast members on the Jackass, like th just everything of theirs because, Maybe. you know, and it's not, there's no sexualness about it. It's like coming from a more of a, a like a educational degree or standpoint. But yeah, it's like whenever you see Dickie Moe, like, oh, there you go. There he goes. I've seen, er come to think of it, I've seen every member of Jackass, original member of Jackass naked, except for Ryan Dunn. He was, but with that said, like, I'd see him walk around with just his hand over his wiener, mm. but never fully naked. And Loomis. You haven't seen Loomis either? I've never seen Loomis fall naked, but I have. I am one of the only people that's seen him in his underwear, and that includes people that live with him. <laughs> Johnny Knoxville lived with Loomis for a long time back in the day, and had ne And I told I, I told um, Johnny that, that I'd seen Loomis in his underwear, and he did not believe me. He's like, no way. I'm like, yeah. I love Loomis I was like, I was so in my much. underwear too. But I think Loomis was comfortable being in his underwear around me. Didn't and you, didn't it wasn't you say like that? we were lounging around watching TV, but I have seen Loomis in his underwear. Did he say like he has a weird like shower habit? No, well, Johnny told me that he spends a lot, like when he go, would go in to take a bath or a shower, 
he'd stay in there for like a long time and what he thought was that and he'd never see a wet towel afterwards <laughs> he air dries there's, a, there's always, always Loomis is so Loomis intriguing because air dries Loomis is a man of mystery so he thought he's like I think he air dries <laughs> just like four hours in the bathroom just air drying I had Loomis stay with me before for a period of time and I think he used a towel but I like that that <laughs> Knoxville thought he air dried maybe he used to air dry but <laughs> I love the idea. I don't think idea. anyone has time for air drying. Air, he thought that he thought that he he's like and he air dries because he'd be in there for an hour and a half. But in reality, no one knows what Loomis was doing in there. But for one thing, Loomis's facial hair probably took some grooming, and Loomis always likes to do his facial hair, even though he always wears a hat. He always has his hair dyed green I've under that hat. I've seen it blonde. Yeah, well, it's blonde, but under that is he dyes it green. Yeah, and I've seen it as just yeah. all blonde, where he it, didn't dye it. Yeah, it's it's amazing that, but he was a probably that he has to dye his hair because it has to be green okay, under his hat. Loomis has really nice skin. Like if you look at his face up close, his skin is really beautiful. He maybe, does have nice skin. Maybe he spends a lot of time. Great. Maybe it's because he hasn't lived the most stressful life in the world <laughs> or like had to wake up that early in the morning to go to work. Just maybe. But I've only, I think stress is like one of the biggest, it is the biggest. I've ager. only seen him eat once uh, and that was mac and cheese. Yeah, he's very really cautious about what he eats. Yeah. But but he's he usually trusts me a lot. So if I'm eating it, he'll eat it. But but so like which is not but like he'd not eat he not, not eat seafood in like years and then like I had some like we went somewhere and I got like swordfish and he's like oh, if you're doing it I'll have the swordfish too and like and then like <laughs> I and I ate soul the, another night and like so he ate soul too and he was stoked on it but like he usually like I think he feels safe around me so like I've never seen him really eat anything even when we went to a Japanese we went to, to a really um, good Japanese restaurant and he 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 just sat there and he ate uh, and he drank no he had he had the roll that I ordered and he loved it I shared it with I him I didn't even see him no eat he it. was stoked and he wanted to eat it again okay yeah no no he, he I, ordered well, my ordered. mistake because I seriously he's didn't not a big see eater him. though normally like I when, love to back eat. when Knoxville lived with Loomis um. All Loomis would eat was Pop Tarts, and he, when they would go on a trip, he'd just bring like cartons of Pop Tarts, which is so unhealthy. And I like to eat. I like to. I like to savor whatever you know people eat. And there's some things that I don't like to eat. Like I don't. I mean, the exotic, really exotic stuff. I'm like, mm. but you know um, what I really didn't like when I was in Hong Kong, stinky tofu. The smell of it made that me stinks. gag. Like it was really bad, and I heard it was really good. But I just couldn't stomach the smell. Maybe I was just really sensitive. Oh yeah, it, those that those two fo tofu neighborhoods stink though. Yeah, really no, stinky. really, really bad. I have something I wanted to say more about Loomis. Also, okay, a weird habit of Loomis. He told me, like sometimes when Loomis would take a lover, he told me <laughs> that he only pulls his pants down to like <laughs> when he's making love. Yeah, and he wears pajamas. I mean, like, but and and he kept his shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, because. Inconvenience. He's Chuck Taylor's. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, Whether this is true or not, I don't know. But I, I think it is. <laughs> That's how I imagine it. Anyway. Well, but we love Loomis. <laughs> we really love Loomis. Like, he's he's great. And, and I'm very and I, attractive to some women. Yeah. We, I, there was this one he, woman that... that well, I, he, has a, he has a cult following in Indonesia. Yeah, in Sulawesi. In Sulawesi. Yes. He they make t-shirts of Loomis. Yeah. In he's a, a little club When in we were in Russia, Loomis... Um, broke his nose when, like we were playing hockey and we had two hockey players check him and it easily broke Loomis's brittle bones in him <laughs> in him he wore this bandage on his nose for like like three years <laughs> basically <laughs> so like they made these t-shirts of Loomis and it included the bandage the bandage that he continued to wear after the surgery like that became a part of him he got really he got really injured in the um in the jet in that Jet stunt that took him out for about ten years. Yeah, yeah that like, he got he got <laughs> he injured. broke his collarbone yeah. and his wrist, but yeah, like that shouldn't have happened, like but, with, the, with the proper diet. Yeah, but the, if he you put calcium, yeah. bit of calcium in your bones. That's why you shouldn't just eat pop tarts. But um, with that said, I think you can tell Loomis has a big one just by the way he carries himself. <laughs> 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 I mean, Thanks, I think everyone Chris. knows that. <laughs>
That's lovely. Not that I have to that say. It was a lovely note to end that on. You like, can just tell. It was really nice. Some people you can just tell they have a huge wiener. Just and I've never seen him naked, but I don't need to. I can just tell he's got a huge one. Just by the way he carries himself, Loomis <laughs> Fall is hung like a horse. <laughs> 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 that was a good one. Um, what time is it? Do we have to pick ass up at school? <laughs> <laughs> that clock that I'm looking at is wrong, so it's been freaking me out. That's why. Oh, yeah, that's true. why. Like when you were like, telling a story, I looked. I looked at my phone because I was like, "Oh my god!" Here. Yeah, I know. Wait, we that's why. Like when you're in the middle of talking, I, I like freaked out and looked at my phone because I looked at that clock and I was like, "No, no oh to... crap!" Axe needs. We to get... need to change that clock. Yeah, that clock is. That's why. That's why I, I rudely wrong. turned away from your story. No, no, it's it's really wrong. So, when I was a kid, <laughs> we. Do you we know, have time for another one? A little story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When I was a kid, um. I, you know, I, I, I've talked about this, you know, I've loved animals my entire life. When I was a kid, I sometimes loved an animal so much that I wanted to become it. And I, I prayed to God to turn me into a mutt jack, which is like this little, um, it's like a, it's a little deer that lives in the swamps of, of Southeast Asia. And he has these cute little horns. And um, I actually did pray to God to turn me into one, but not till after March 14th, because that was my friend Lucas's birthday. And I didn't want to miss his birthday party, because I knew once I turned into a mutt jack, I would never be going back to the human world. So like, I remember like laying in bed consciously, like praying to God to turn me into that, but, but and, and adding that note to wait till after Lucas's birthday. Oh, that's really cute, Chris. But <laughs> That's really sweet. But, Cause thank and you. that you wanted to attend a birthday party. But God in his great wisdom um, did not turn me into <laughs> a mutt jack, knowing that my favorite animal would probably change one day. <laughs> and sure enough, it changed, you know, I would jump from favorite animals, one favorite animal to another, so. Our son just had a birthday. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just, he turned three, what, um, how many he days did, ago? That's what made me think nine, of it. Nine days ago, like a few days ago. And, and like, man, <laughs> he's embraced the three-year-old, like, he's latched on. He's, I mean, the thing is with Axe, we didn't have a party for him. We just had his, like, family and his cousins um, because he's turning three and he doesn't really understand, like, the whole party lingo. I mean, he's a different He's a different kid. He's like you. He's cut. so you. I, I, have to cut, I have to break character right now. There's something that you saying that, talking about Axe, made me... There's a something... What did Axe do? Uh, we have to have a little pro a meeting. What did Axe do in the past two days that was so funny? There's something that, like, I wanted to talk about Axe. Like... Was um, it with the surprise? Talk, he's talking. God, what'd he do? He does this. He does this a lot. Oh, when he makes a point? Well, he he wags point. his finger like his dad. He stomps around the house just like his dad. Yeah, me and Axe... He's very demanding. Sorry, I cut you off. Um, so no, you think okay. Axe is a lot like me? Oh, God, he's... a splitting fucking image of you he's he's a carbon copy of you like and this is <laughs> this is why because when he first started walking he started walking at around nine ten months like he was an early walker he started he started at eight he months but yeah so when you would walk you stomp down the hallway and and i can hear your footsteps very loudly and he was walking down the hallway and i was like oh he's chris and it was him. Yeah. <laughs> we have matching footsteps. And they're sync. So when like, we walk together, it's just, it's it like sounds stomp. like two of us. And yeah, it's not it like, you know, when you walk, you're like, you, it's like stomp, stomp. So it, there's, it's a, there's really a rhythm. Weird. Like we have the exact same yeah. rhythm walking. Yeah. And he has a lot of your tendencies. Like he really is picked up on 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 his dad. He's, not quite my. Oh, he's he is mum's. Oh, yeah. He's some of mum's yeah, stuff. Yeah, like does. he doesn't like his hands dirty. He doesn't like dirty fingers. Like, he doesn't like spiders. He doesn't like spiders. I don't like spiders. I grew up in yeah. a world of spiders. Yeah. Like, like growing up in He's, Australia um, and having spiders. Like this is how bad spiders were. Yeah. We had this like. He's strong willed. We had this path to go to the car. Right. Yeah. I had to walk through this path of it was kind of like canopy. And in the morning, I had a um, I had like a spider web stick mm -hmm. just to kind yeah. of oh, like clear, the cobwebs? clear can i ask you a question yes have you ever been bit by a spider no see so do you ever uh despite being so afraid of spiders 
never like, been bitten. Is it by just one. like the way they carry themselves? That I don't, I don't. Yeah, you know, like I mean, I can look at them. It's sometimes, you know, sometimes it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like on set, like I met the tarantula. It was really big. It was, it was very. It was okay because it was like this big. But driving, I showed I showed Ira this video uh, and, and Mark this video earlier. Uh, this woman was driving and this huntsman was in the car and just like, you know, crawling on. And huntsmans are completely harmless, but they are like this big. Sean Cliver rolled his car because he thought a spider was like by, he was driving down the road and he thought a spider was like, like on his dashboard on the inside. Yeah. And he freaked out. He roll, he, he like tried to like hit it or something like that. He like crashed through a fence and ro actually rolled his car, almost yeah, died. I don't think because of his fear. I don't think people afraid. really it turned out it wasn't even a spider. Oh <laughs> Jesus. Um, Some of the bravest people I know are afraid. So there's like Manny Puig who like rides sharks around. Yeah. Um he's afraid. He's horrified. You put a spider on him, he'll like freak out. He said, my mom doesn't like snakes. He says, if you see a spider, you should kill them. The world's got enough spiders. Oh, geez. That's how much he hates them. Me, I'll put the spider outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not like, if I see a spider and it's like there, like the last thing I want to do is kill it because I know it's going to, it's got its duty in, but I just don't want it near me. Like who wants a spider near them? No, like especially, okay, so these instances growing up, towels, spiders on the towel like you know you hang it up and mm -hmm. you're like oh leave it for a day spider you've got to check for spiders mm -hmm. shoes check for spiders yeah everything window sills check for spiders i'm not afraid of spiders at all but you know what i but noticed here I in america that... everyone does the the you know like the guards yeah. like they do this they spray the right. house so there's like but my parents my parents house spiders all up in there. Yeah. Well, in Australia, it's unavoidable. They're everywhere. Huge. And my dad and my mom, not phased. They're just like, eh, whatever. Um, but actually, one time, we had a lizard this big that came into our house. It was like a blue tongue. It was like this big. I think it was a blue tongue. No, it wasn't. It, it was, was huge. It was a goanna. The giant monitor. Yeah, it came That's into the That's the one that house. lives in people's houses. A goanna. Eh. A goanna. And they'll run up you. You can let them oh, run up okay, you. Okay, so... So this is like, you know, growing up in Australia, like wild stuff. My parents decided to leave me um, at home by myself while they went to Morocco and Egypt and go on this trip. Mm -hmm. And I see a dead possum in the yard. 18 years old. What am I going to do? Like I'm by myself. There's this dead possum in the yard. Like Possums in Australia are like super cute. And they're the cutest. By the way, thing. they don't look like American possums. They look like... Like big sugar gliders. They're and so cute. They're this big. And they're really cute. Like possums here look like giant rats. The ones that your Australian ones, they call your parents actually call you possum because yeah. like there, there was a possum in the attic and it would make noise at night. And when you'd come out home at night, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, there's the possum. But it was you. That's pretty cute. Because I came home pretty late. You know what? Um, I'm going to have to. Um, but, you know, I mean, growing up in Australia, it was it was. It was fun. I think I think I wouldn't be the of same it's person. Fun. Oh, of course it's fun. Australia's awesome. So we don't have much time left. And I just found myself, I just doodled a penis. And 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 I, when you draw a penis, I think I, I it was looks like, like a mushroom. How come when I so does mine? Or a fireman helmet. Like, but I was like, I just realized when I draw a penis, I draw it from the underside. <laughs> and, and I realized I think most people when they draw a penis, they draw they draw the it from, side. from the top. The top because they're looking down. <laughs> yeah, I always draw it from the underside. Because maybe when you look at other people's penises, you only see the underside. Well, like I'm under them. Yeah. I don't know why. I just think that's the one of the coolest parts of a penis to look at. Like, I mean, if I have a boner, I I, I, don't know, I just realized it now. How come every time I draw a penis, it's from that view? And what does that say about me? <laughs> well, you're not afraid. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> profile. I never realized that, oh, so, that about myself. That should be some on some sort of psychological test, though. Like they ask the the the, the, the silent in like psychological tests, they should ask the, the patient like, "All right, draw a penis for me." And if you draw it from the side view, from the above view, or from the under view, that's some sort of psychological profile. I don't know what this says about me. But <laughs> penises are rad. <laughs> All right, time to pick up acts at school. Yeah. <laughs>
parent duty. Um, it is about that yeah. time. Yeah. I just wanted to end on something strong. <laughs> 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 I love how we end on, like, we gotta go pick him up. Or he's yeah. awake. We gotta go. Yeah, that's when... That is so true, though. Like, what a weird so psychological profile exam that would be. Like, asking someone to draw a penis and... You, I mean, you watching this, try at home, like, or have your friend that hasn't watched the show, have them draw a penis and see what view they draw it from. Yeah. Yeah. See what your friend's views are on the penis drawing. When it is, I draw it from below, does that mean I look up to the penis and admire it? Maybe. <laughs> like, hold it on some kind of pedestal? Maybe so. Actually, I think it's pretty obvious that I do hold penises on some kind of pedestal. Yeah. If not my own. Oh, yeah. Not just my own, though. I think penises in general. I mean, I actually manufacture a stress reliever, you know, which is shaped very similar to a penis. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it's not a toy. I wonder if it's relieved anyone's stresses. Oh, yeah. We uh, were actually talking, you know, even though it says it's a choking hazard and that it's not a toy, what you do when it... Yeah, it, it's really stress. There's a lot of ways you can relieve stress. I squeeze it. I, I find myself... When I'm talking and I'm holding it, when I'm showing someone, I always do find myself actually squeezing it. So it is a good, handy stress reliever that happens to be shaped like a penis. Yes. But and a you know what? And a dinosaur. P and everyone has different names for it, too. Pe people have asked. They do, huh? Yeah. We call it Pontiosaurus. But people have asked, like, is it based, is it anatomically correct? Is it based on the real thing? No, it's not. And when I'm holding it now, it feels nothing like when I'm holding my own penis. Well, actually, you have very big balls if this is anatomic. Yeah, it's not and, anatomically and it's like, correct This is when, when your balls are cold, too, because usually when they're warmer, they hang low, right? Like, yeah. Like, you told me about the, the no, whole No, when your ball balls theory. are cold, no. They go closer to your body. When your balls have got to constantly, uh, like, maintain a certain temperature. So when you're cold, the balls go closer. Yeah. When you're relaxed or when you're in a humid, hot climate, you'll find your balls dangling low and your penis so if you are going to, like, get nude photos take, taken of you, it's best to be in a warmer room. And also, not doing anything dangerous. Like, when you, if, you're, if you're a guy, you, you don't know this because you're a girl, but, and if you're ever seeing, like, a vert ramp yeah. and you touch your penis, you'll find your penis practically going in inside of your body because your body, your, your body is it. like, oh, I'm in danger, potential danger, because skating vert is dangerous. Yeah. Like, like, you're like, I'm in danger, so your body, your penis will actually, like, compress into itself. To protect itself because or or like i'm sure if you're wrestling or in, in a fist fight or any kind of dangerous situation your penis like it goes into itself for so protection when you're doing like extreme sports your penis like sucks like, into itself yeah that's what i found like when my penis is looking at its shyest is when i'm skating vert street skating not so much even though street skating is dangerous but if i'm like, skating a handrail well, yeah my penis will compress into itself but if I'm just like skating a curb, <laughs> like Ira, <laughs> or something Ira, like that, Ira agreed with like, you. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I yep, think yep, any yep, skater yep. will that's a, that has a penis. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, good like, to know. But yeah, if you're skating vert, any kind of dangerous skateboarding, reach down, feel b b between your legs, and see what your penis is doing. I think you'll agree. You'd be a fool not to. For you, for sure, are not going to have a boner. <laughs> like you can't skate with a boner. With that said, I have no trouble at all getting a boner around large groups of people, especially ones with cameras. It, that's just the kind of type of guy I am. That's why I'm an entertainer. There's Natural three boner. cameras right here. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> like when people are like, yeah. oh, God, when cameras are on me, like, like, like it, it, you know, I can't perform. You don't perform. need a fluffer. You if don't anything, need a fluffer. Yeah, no, right? no, no. It, if anything, it makes me perform better. Like, because I think I have entertainer in me. Yeah. And that's why... I've worked in TV and movies for a living. And that's why he wants to be Wolverine. Yeah. And if you can't get a boner on camera, <laughs> I'm not saying forget about being an actor. <laughs> oh, I've lost myself. You I've know. gotten ahead of myself. Yeah. But I think that that's what makes me a good performer. Yeah. Or at least gives me performer-like traits. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of scared of you holding that. I know, that's why I was like scared of you waving this around. <laughs> Yeah. It, it, it is really painful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I saw someone compare that to an asp, and, like, that thing was way worse. So we're going to test this test this out? I don't know, a criminal. Yeah. No, no, no. You said, <laughs> you no, said this will... A pumpkin. Yeah, oh, yeah, it'll smash a pumpkin. We're going to test it out. Smashing pumpkins. And you'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs>
So we're gonna have to go and buy some pumpkins, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. We're gonna do like these tests with these weapons of, of mine. I mean, it's better than than you know pulling them out at bars and things like that. Oh yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> Never again. Yeah. Last time I pulled a knife at a bar, May got cut by me, <laughs> and that did not go over well. No, it didn't. Not only with you. <laughs> but with this, the bar security, they did not think it was the coolest thing no. either. They did not like that I had a, a, a weapon with me at the bar. They did not like that I was brandishing it. And they did not like that I cut someone with it or stabbed someone and that it was you. And I'm sorry, it was an accident. Yeah, I, I carry this scar with me. <laughs> and I've never done it since. Permanently. <laughs> I just brandished this scar. Actually, there was a couple of doctors there, so like our friends were there, and they were doctors. And, and they some had lessons are harder, harder learned than they, others. They looked and they checked, and you just missed a, a you missed a vein. There was right there, <laughs> right on top. And you missed it, but it was bleeding profusely. I hate to say it, but I think I might have said when it happened, instead of. I know. <laughs> I know. Of being you said. Sorry for pulling out that. I, I said you should be more careful yeah, around was, me I when was, I'm waving. I arm. was the. I was the one at fault. <laughs> you should I, be I, yeah. more careful around me when I'm waving a knife around. Yeah. So I'm the one at fault. I that was a hard learned lesson. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't every uh, isn't every woman uh, in, yeah. in a relationship like? Uh, but no, that's not that's not how we are at all. I don't think. No. But but yeah, no, I admit it, it was my fault that you got stabbed by that knife. And I will never pull a knife out in a, in a, in a bar room ever again, especially around you. This but, is a public apology. But not in a bar, but anywhere else, <laughs> like in a home. Yeah, he like it's like, oh, have a look at my new knife. Oh, have a look at this axe. Have a check this out, this little hatchet. With that said, it was one of my favorite knives. You to pick out the axe. If not my favorite. We have to pick up Axe. Right, let's go pick up Axe at school. All right. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Yeah. And I can't wait for you to see us this... try this puppy out on a yeah. pumpkin. We're uh, getting educational now. Oh, yeah. We're learning a lot. We're learning things we didn't even know ourselves. Yeah. But I think, I mean. Careful with that. Oh, no, no. It's not that kind okay. of whip. <gasps> Dude. <laughs> well, maybe it is. All right. Let's go pick up Axe at school. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Ha <laughs> <laughs>